guys and welcome to today's edition of One Minute Answers from One Minute Economics, the show in which you guys ask me economics related questions and I do my best to answer them in a minute or so. For today, I've chosen a topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is personal finance and I love it so much that I have actually written a book about it, which I invite you to check out. The book is called Wealth Management 2.0 and it's basically the only book out there that teaches those who make money online how to manage that money properly. So if you're a freelancer or an online entrepreneur or a Bitcoin investor and so on. So generally speaking, if you make money online in any possible way, then this book is going to help you uh, become better at managing that money. It's a book written by myself, by an economist. And at the same time, I'm an economist who makes money online himself. I know my audience because, come on, I'm a part of the audience I've written the book for. So if you make money online or if you know somebody who do, please check out Wealth Management 2.0 and help me spread the word about it. Now, that being stated, I will be moving on to answering today's questions, but not before picking a topic for next week. And the topic for next week is going to be debt. So, for example, you can ask me anything about credit card debt or about your mortgage or anything related to the debt that you personally have. Or, of course, if you're worried about the debt levels of your uh, country, for example, then you can ask me about that as well or about sovereign debt in general. So, basically, if you have any debt-related question at all, please ask me by writing a comment below and I'm going to do my best to answer it next week. Week. Let's move on to the first question for today, which has been asked by Linskull TV, who would like to know what the best way to invest a relatively small amount of money, such as $500, uh, would be. I mean, and this is perhaps the single most common question I receive as an economist because a lot of people are in such situations, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys are going to find uh, my answer useful and what I always answer in these situations is this invest in yourself generously invest in whatever it is makes you uh, become better at what you currently do for a living so if you're a carpenter for example this might mean investing in better tools or maybe investing in a course investing in other kinds of equipment investing in anything that helps you become better and make more money and it's ridiculous just how high the returns of investing in yourself can be but most people don't think about it you know i mean if you're a carpenter and you spend 500 bucks on a bunch of new awesome tools that help you become more productive or help you uh, create a high quality product then who knows how much money you're ultimately going to make as a result of that investment you know let's assume uh it helps you make an extra $5,000 per year. It would be awesome, you know? Something as simple as that can make you an extra five grand each year. And of course, the following year, you're gonna keep using these tools, and time and time again, you're gonna make more and more money as a result of the fact that you have invested in yourself. So buy tools, buy equipment, buy courses, buy anything in this world that helps you become better at what it is you do for a living. The second question for today has been asked by Sorry, who would like to know how you can beat inflation. First and foremost, don't keep most of your money in cash. Keeping your money in cash is a surefire way to lose purchasing power as a result of inflation. Okay, next, it all depends on your risk tolerance. I would say that there are two dimensions. Uh, the first one tends to be preferred by those who want to limit themselves to just protecting uh, their wealth against inflation, and it's the more, let's say, uh, low-risk dimension, investing in tangible assets, such as the real estate, as in maybe at least the house in which you live, and perhaps also precious metals, which even if, if the charts don't always show an amazing correlation to inflation, they're a good choice, especially if you buy physical and not ETFs, and if you buy them with the intention of holding rather than selling at the first panic. So the first dimension is represented by, let's say, tangible assets. Please keep in mind that you buy these not to get rich, but to preserve what you already have. 
Which brings us to the second dimension, which is that of the more riskier assets in which you invest to not just maintain what you have, but to also enhance your wealth. I'm talking about anything from stocks to domain names to cryptocurrencies to anything else in uh, along those lines. And I would say that sure, even if you want to play it safe and only invest in tangible assets, I think it would be a good idea to have at least some exposure to the second dimension as well. Be reasonable, reasonably diversified by all means, focus more on, on uh, tangible assets if that makes you feel safer, but at the same time, at least a little bit of exposure to riskier assets would, in my opinion, be a good idea. Today's third and final question has been asked by Bruce, who would like to know if somebody who doesn't have a job or an income stream and has minimal capital should even bother looking into investing? It's a great question, it's a tricky one. It sounds similar to the first question, but it's not because the person in this scenario doesn't have a job. He doesn't have something at which he can get better uh, by investing in himself. Okay, I'm gonna give it a try and start by saying that my first reaction is simply responding with a clear no uh, and saying, you know, uh, of course your main priority should be getting back on your feet, finding a job, finding a way to make money and so on. But if you think about it, there's definitely room for investing in yourself for such a person as well. Because, okay, you don't have a job, you don't have an income stream, but sometimes in such cases, even a small investment in yourself can be life altering. Like for example, I don't know, if you're currently looking for a job and, finding dif and having difficulties finding one, you can buy a good book, which might very well uh, help you do just that. And come on, even if you have minimal capital, like in this example, uh, you probably have enough money for at least, you know, a book on Amazon or something like that. The same way, maybe you're not able for all sorts of reasons to get a full-time job. Perhaps then you can buy a book about how to make a little bit of money on the side. And again, a small investment, a book that you buy on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or, or anywhere else, that simple book can indeed prove to be life altering. So I would say that for a person in this situation, while of course the number one priority is getting back on your feet, I would venture to say that investing a little bit in yourself in the manner in which I've described is gonna help you with just that. And on that note, I'm gonna put an end to today's edition of One Minute Answers from One Minute Economics, but not before reminding you that the topic for next week is debt. You can ask me anything at all about debt, from questions related to your own debt, to your credit card debt, mortgage, or, and so on, to questions about sovereign debt, about whether or not you're worried about countries that are too indebted, or anything along those lines. If you have a question, simply ask me by writing a comment below, and I'm going to do my best to answer it next week. Again, thanks a lot for tuning in. I'd like to remind you that uh, if you make money online and want to become better at managing it, you should definitely check out Wealth Management 2.0. You can find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBooks & Kobo, or simply visit wealthmanagement2.com for more information about the book. And even if you don't make money online, the kind of advice I've provided in the book and especially advice packaged in the way in which my advice is packaged is surely gonna help you become smarter with your finances. So again, if you can, definitely try to find some time and check it out. Of course, as always, please be active in the community, comment on my videos, like them, subscribe to One Minute Economics if you haven't by now, and to find out more about how you can support the channel financially as well, head on over to oneminuteeconomics.com. Thanks a lot, guys, and have an awesome weekend.